What's up, dear John Carter? You just build up the singing and then completely deflate any possible introduction I could have because everyone expects me to sing, but I'm not gonna because I don't rely on cheap gimmicks. I rely on no frills, solid casting, Jay. You're trying to bait something else out of me. It's very unscrupulous of you. Well, uh, Crack Clan Sams, he did challenge us that uh, if we were to do eight bars of a rap battle each, he would donate another Dota 2 key to our cause. We are, of course, giving out a Dota 2 key, which I'm sure nobody actually wants now that everybody in the whole entire world has a Dota 2 key. What's that all about, DJC? Can Trell not get us any good prizes? I thought he was off finding us sponsors and all sorts. He's just been playing Dota for 85 hours a week for the past few months. Trill is back, he was the organizer, the man behind this cast, and even though pretty much everyone in the world has Dota now, uh, he is offering up a key. Once there's some more people in here, we'll announce the specific details of that, but you don't need to worry about it, it'll be relate related well, to the DJC, second map. Well, DJC, I've got breaking news for you. We're going to trump that, because my boy Skeege from Avenue Esports was talking to me earlier, and he said he wanted to give away his extra copy of NS2, he just didn't know who to give it to. So, uh, Natural Selection 2, a game I have sunk many many hours into in the last two weeks uh, we're going to be giving away a copy of that as well so we'll have to come up with two competitions DJC oh my god you could have told me this before we went live <laughs> because I was already <laughs> sure to come up with one competition man alright oh, I'm thinking uh, for at least one of them it will be who you have to predict the top score and you have to predict how many points they will have excluding the medics you know that's what I'm saying yeah, I guess I'll, uh, since Trell, I don't know if he's here right now, I can field those when we get to the time of it. Nope, Trell's back! Yes, I don't have to do that. Yes! Yes! But, uh, oh, I like to tell people to PM Trell, I know that's caused fireworks in the past, DJC. Yeah, we Let's... gotta find that out first. Disrupt the competition light. lines have not opened. Do not PM Trell yet, guys. Do not query Trell. If you do query Trell, you're doing it without our authorization, at your own discretion. And please don't name us when you do so. Yeah, we're sort feel of. Free uh, to. I know a lot of people might just be tuning in on Twitch, but if you want to enter this competition, you'll have to go to our IRC channel. That's irc.quicknet.org, and join Hash Vanilla TV there, because we are old school, man. We are using the internet relay chats. We can't do this competition on Twitch. I think it would be a little tricky to manage because we don't have some cool script like Day Nine where you can see all the stuff. But is that fair, DJC? Uh, sounds fair to me, man. I do actually have that script installed, but I don't know how to use it because I have never. But hey, this is this is a very disorganized and bizarre start to our cast stream. <laughs> so let's actually talk about what we're here for. We're gonna be casting the last match of the premiership of ETF. No, we're not. We're not. We're here for Skyride, man. This is another Skyride quality test. The guy who's single-handedly upping the game of TF2 casters everywhere. Skyride, our streamer tonight. Give up for Skyride. Woo -hoo -hoo! Yes, indeed. Too Welcome, Skyride. He'll be here as we close out the Premiership season, the highest level of European TF2 play. We're going to be watching BFF go off against the Last Resort, and you know this match actually has a little bit of uh, extra implications admirable, because if BFF win one map, they clinch the second seed in the ETF World Playoffs, and for TLR to win the second seed, they have to win both of these maps. You actually got a little bit of experience with BFF as you were their pregame warm up playing them on CP Galeosh, which will be our second map here today. What did you notice about their play, James? I was actually asking my team at the end of the first map because I couldn't really figure it out. I wasn't really paying attention as to why they lost, but they reckoned that Kiris was doing a lot of damage, but he just wasn't getting the follow up from his soldiers. Zebesai wasn't really playing that well in the warm up at least. But I just have been told by TLR's Doroso that they are ready, and I expect they'll be readying up in 90 seconds. Due to that STV uh, relay delay, <laughs> so uh, DJC, what was your take on it from the spectator's viewpoint? Well, I actually have a unique perspective here, much more unique than yours, because last week I got to play Medic for BFF as they played a little Gullywash, and they were god-awful, nearly losing to Elemental Violence, who, no offense to Elemental Violence, but they're a division below BFF. Not nearly as good. They are a good team, just not on BFF's level. So the fact that BFF were struggling to get rounds off of them with my superb, fantastic medicking in there is pretty depressing. It just generally does seem to be an issue of Cadis will get in and do 5,000 damage and then his soldiers and scouts will both be dead. So the only person that really cleaned it up is Mirilin. And as much as Mirilin would love to go in and throw some uber cells around and shoot some needles, he's not really going to 1v5 the rest of the team. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, have you seen them play Turbine? Did you get to play? 
I did get to play Turbine. Um, I, I have not seen them lose a Turbine round, I do believe. Uh, they play a pretty fast-paced style. They get very thrown off their game when the other team runs a slow style. But they've still, I think they've won every time I've seen them play Turbine. Uh, they just get very bored when they're sitting back. Like, if you're in... If they're in their intel room, if they're just waiting for something to come to them, they all tend to get frustrated, a little bit antsy, maybe move themselves a little too far out of position, and it doesn't go very well for them. So TLR might want to look if, if they can pick up on that, if they've seen it off of Cadis' stream or off of demos or anything. Maybe they want to play a little more passive, just try and bait BFF into making some mistakes. Yeah, worth pointing out, guys, that you can watch Cadis' POV and the BFF comms at twitch.tv forward slash... Kiris with another S on the end there. Kiris, s -s -s -s. so uh, if you just hate the sound of this Irish American uh, casting travesty, switch on over there, and you won't have to listen to us. You can listen to darn drunk and crazy, but I definitely feel they will be strong on Turbine. Obviously, they had a result there against Quarantine, right? I think they beat them two one. I don't know the exact scores of those rounds, but going on previous league results, they would be favourites for this. Whereas uh, TLR lost two zero to Epsilon and Turbine. So they haven't had the taste of victory yet on this map. Uh, BFF also lost to Epsilon on Gollywash way at the start of the season. 6-1, that was a tough one to watch. So they're maybe not so confident on Gollywash. The fact they practiced it twice against us, they didn't opt to practice Turbine at all, tells a lot, I think, DJC. Yeah, they're pretty confident in their Turbine play. They like to set the pace. Gollywash is pretty ugly. We can save the analysis of Gollywash for when we actually get there because... There are some things that BFF do on Turbine that may seem a little confusing to a lot of- Oh god, I dropped the thing. And it made noises, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But, uh, <laughs> BFF, most l lower division teams will often advocate the running of an engineer to turtle in their intel room, just put up a sentry gun and protect the flag. But most top teams don't seem to do that. BFF no different. They just run two scouts and try and get aggression, aggression to be their best defense. I'm pretty sure that's how most Prem teams are running. If the Engineer just takes too long to get set up, and you're basically giving the opponent mid for free. And on Turbine, holding mid is a bit overrated. It's not the most crucial thing to getting caps or having good fights. But when you're in control of mid, you do kind of get to dictate the action, and that's very in favor of BFF, as they have very aggressive players on every position. Zebesai, their roaming soldier, was upcoming talent of the season, or soldier of the season last year. Very talented roamer, one of the most keen players in the game, watches every demo he can. Yeah, like, the it way is... you basically have to look at Turbine, man, is it's it's like a C, a 3 CP map, you know, you got to treat the middle as a point. you got to hold that and defend it if you're at an uber disadvantage or push from it, and, like, you're usually going to leave two players at middle and try and push with uh, your combo of three and then have one coming in to grab, because it's just too hard to heal, like, five or six players if you're trying to push directly into the flag room. And uh, I think that's, the engineer used to be popular, but people have just figured out that they can, with teamwork, hold the middle quite easily and watch out for back caps with a scout on defense because he's just fast enough to go back and deny. And especially now that they have this um, thing where you can see the intel through the walls, when someone picks it up, if you're running direct X9 and you have a certain command enabled, it gives you a glowing outline left for dead style. So Turbine has changed a little bit in that sense from the, the sort of golden era of whenever TCM used to rule the roost with like coins, hunter, and bite on demo man. So I think there's it's easier in some sense to defend. Like back caps are less prolific because of that. You can see through the walls, but that's just my take on it, DJC. We're gonna go live here as Cadis informed me 90 seconds ago before your rant started, but I guess we're still not a little we're still not quite there for those who aren't aware. We are on about a 90 second delay here as we are on the Source TV, not live in the game server. And Cadis has so kindly delayed his stream so there's no spoilers, so if you want to go over and watch him, we are going to go live here. So I will welcome everyone to Vanilla TV's cast of ETFL Season 13, Week 7, Premiership Game between BFF and The Last Resort. Take it over on Middle Admirable. Yeah, BFF are open to stay quite passive, waiting for TLR to jump in, and that seems to be working quite well for them now. Zebesai drops the hammer, bombs in, finds... Uh... Evilman there, but doesn't finish him off. He surfs out to safety. Merlin stayed alive too, but the number advantage is in favour of BFF, and they have middle under control. They should be pushing into that flag room already. Yes, there's Bibbin with the intel grab. He's going to be running out. He's got a chaser here. It's Donut trying to do enough damage, but that chip shot will not kill him. He will make it out. Although he does need a little spam here. He has to turn away from his preferred route back to the flag. 
opts to save himself and call in the backup of his team. Now he has securely got that briefcase out DJC and it looks like BFF will be holding middle here and waiting to see what happens. Yeah, this is how BFF want this map to lay out. They use Bibbin as their flag runner. He's going to come in as the Uber pushes in, grab the intel and make his way back. They use Cookie and Cadis as the spearheads of the push. Uh, sometimes Cookie or one of the other or the other scout might rotate back to mid to help out Zebasai on the hold. But we will see TLR with their Uber here. They're going to try and push out this banana, this extra flank route that's added in Turbine Pro. There's stickies above the door though. Cadis not popping. Waits for the double kill. Takes down both soldiers. This is going to be a very bad Uber for TLR. They have a scout and a demo, but that's it. Zebasai gets cleaned up inside the banana on the flank. Got peeled right there. And Cadis <laughs> is going to push back in with his soldier buddy. They only have 50%, but the medic is caught out here and the intel has been picked up by Cookie and he will come in and take down Evil Moon, dropping him right there. But the scout is also on a Miriel and Joseph file trying to make something happen. But Miriel pulls out the Uber song, goes straight at him. Will get taken out by Joseph while that Cadis with the pipe at the end. This will make it two to nothing in favor of BFF already. I love that total disrespect for Merlin. He's like, he dodges every shot and he's like, this guy is terrible. I'm going to kill him with my Uber saw. But Joseph composed himself just at the last minute there to finish him off. But big plays from the BFF medic there. I wonder why his team just didn't react fast enough. But right now, again, BFF in control. They've got that cap and they managed to hold on to the middle. I think uh, TLR pushing from Banana. Stickies are just so powerful there, like if you push from the main entrance, there's a lot of space relatively speaking, like this is a very crunt map, but you can always try and make something happen here. If you show your combo in main, you've got a lot of options to get out, but if, if you're in banana and they see you coming, man, you just eat so much spam, and it's even tighter in there. Tight yeah. as a nuns, and here they come straight out of main DJC, <laughs> the Uber's been popped off very early from TLR, and BFF will be very happy with this trade in middle for Uber, now it's basically rules reversed. And Zebasai goes down there, but he trades for Drosso, so that's a scout missing here to cap for TLR. And that means there's going to be one less player to defend middle. Donut is forced to go for the grab. Kedis has stickies there. He walks through them, though. And, wow, they just focused on Bibbin, but Kedis does get the double pipe kill there. He's just waiting for the moment when he can do the most damage. And as all of this is happening, Cookie actually ran into the intel room, got the intel, he's making his way through the shutter door, now he's at the spawn. But as that is going on, BFF are pushing out the middle, Cadis with a huge aggressive play, takes down Drizzle while walks in the shutter door and hits a pipe on an evil moon, taking him down as well. Big plays out of Jason Allen, Europe's best demo man right there. And now right. with the 3-0 score and Uber, BFF are going to have an easy fourth cap coming in, James. Yeah, Cadis really smashing it so far in this round. I was just going to say that... Uh... If you're looking out for that Dota 2 competition, it's going to be on the second map. But the Ubers have been popped off here anyway for BFF. There's actually a soldier jumped up top. Trick Zantrick's hiding that vent right now, but he's been called by Merlin. Darn finishes him off with a precise rocket to the chest there. And the Bibbin gets the intel, does a loop the loop here around the doors. And he looks like he might just get out. He's on 98 HP. He's getting chased down by pretty much everybody from TLR. But now they realize that Kadis is waiting for them on middle with stickies. But Drogso is going to go in and try and pick off that demo one. But eats another pipe from Kadis. He just seems to be hitting everything, DJC. Yeah, he always gets into these games. Once the playoffs come near, Kadis starts playing at his absolute best. And I like there, as we saw Bibbin and Josephi with the 1v1, Bibbin trying to take the intel out. Bibbin won the 1v1, but decided, nah, Josephi deserves to live. I'm just going to leave. And Joseph got to stay alive on 40 HP, and that will make it 4 to nothing. BFF once again have control of middle. They do not have Uber yet, and TLR actually have this very early pop, though. His heist, whatever you want to call it, jumps up on the crates. We'll get Darn and Bib in the nice double, but Cadis and Miraland are back at spawn. They're going to be able to rotate quickly to the intel room and likely defend this, especially with Evil the big picks going up here. Cookie and Zebasai. Evil Moon is dead, so no heals for TLR here, but they desperately need to get in the intel room, make something happen. At the least, they can get a forest. Trexanic jumps right onto the stickies and then eats the mini air shot. Do not say with the intel, though. He's running through that blue banana right now. He's on 63 HP. He must have been called... And TLR are actually dealing with the cookie back cap there. Uh, but they only have three in middle, so if BFFF, 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 and quickly they can move out here and get position. They've already been, done big damage to Cyber. Here comes Bibbin from the roof. They're making a play for that intel. The Uber's been popped off. They could get quite a few frags here. It could be a double cap if they manage to get highs, but he's got darn down to 5 HP. Jozo comes in on the flank, and now BFF are all at sea. They're backing off with Cadis, but he gets finished off by a wayward rocket there. Merlin on 33 HP with the needles out. He's going toe to toe oh with Donut. Oh, he pisses out, he goes for the med pack. There is no honor here. Merlin gets finished off. Donut with some smart play there. Wow. Wow, DJC. So you can see how quickly things can turn on Turbine here. 
It was BFF having the intel, trying to get it out, but it opened up some space where TLR to get the cap, and they're going to swing this into a second cap, bringing it to 4-2 to two very, very quickly. TLR did have a bit of aggressive hold there, but they've moved back to middle. They're just going to hold the shutter door with their demo man. Right now, they have no coverage on Banana, though, and I know Zebesai likes to play inside of there and see if he can make anything happen. Cookie's going to take down Trexantic, and the soldier is up top, but no scouts for BFF right now, and the Uber is getting very, very close for TLR here. Yeah, It'll be DJC. interesting... Go on. I just want to say is just that uh, under the rule set, it's first to five, so this is a very important intel here for TLR. Normally, you, you might want to defend that one when it's already halfway across the map, but they really need to defend that, because if they BFF cap that one, the round is over. And it's going to help TLR here. That they got Mirlin with their nice Uber. Cyber will go down, but they'll take that trade. Kadish tries to clear the stickies away from the Intel. They want to reset this. The timer is getting very close. Their Intel resets, I believe, once every minute, once it's been sitting out, goes back to the spawn room. And I say once every minute, even though that doesn't make any sense in context of what the Intel does. Scout is now in BFF's Intel room, but Kadish is going to throw some nice stickies on him, and Donut will die. Josephile is not in position to grab that right now, but he's getting there rather quickly. Yeah, realistically, BFF could just troll here. They could give up that intel. They've wasted, or like they've sacrificed a lot of players to try and keep refreshing that, and they've lost two caps for it, or maybe one cap there, and it's bringing the game closer. When really they could just turtle up for three minutes, having got themselves ahead. Uh, it's ten minute time limit, or first to five. And right now, BFF are going to push out here. The oh, they're just actually showing themselves a little bit. They're not too convinced by this. I'm not sure if they are really going to commit to this push or not. Is it some sort of distraction? Yeah, they're trying to get the attention of Heist so they can make a grab of the intel, but he's just keeping his stickies there on the briefcase, and the Uber has been popped off for TLR. Merlin's in position to re-pop. Now, BFF are coming out strong. There's still about 50 seconds left on that flag reset timer, so they are going to make a grab for it. They need to pressure the demo man, though. Heist needs to be their target here, but they're going for soldiers. They're going for medic. But all they really need to do is grab that intel, Evil Moon goes down, Marilyn goes down, but it's a man advantage for BFF, and now they finally muscled their way out here, having killed everybody, they finally clear up that intel, and this is going to be the fifth and victorious cap, I think, DJC, TLR barring a server crash. Barring a server crash, barring someone typing in the Archon and typing Archon quit. You see, TLR just had to put every single player they had on that intel. They knew they couldn't afford to have it touched because in the position it was, it's such a short run to the enemy spawn. And if BFF get that to their spawn, there's no way TLR are going to defend it. So TLR just kind of had to overcommit. There really wasn't much choice there. Yeah, uh, it was a strange situation, but I think uh, TLR did the best that they could. They were really up against uh, a rock and a hard place. I think BFF took a while to figure out what exactly they needed to do to win because they just threw so many players at it while allowing caps out and then they just realised they needed to just shore up your flag room first. That's often the best way to play in Turbine. Like if it's come down to a messy situation, just play through your flag room and make sure you have that covered before you try and put on any further aggression. And they did it well. I will say that Turbine is the most unique map in the pool. Obviously, it's the only CTF map. It plays differently from some other CTF maps, mainly because of the rule set, but also the design helps quite a bit. You kind of have to move off of your intel room, which isn't how, say, 2 forward or CTF well would work. We are going to take over the second half here, or second round in the best of three, whatever I want to call it. I'm going to put my camera on Heise. I want to see what he's doing on mid. Doesn't even bother shooting Sticky. He just throws four pipes onto the shutter door. Tries to get aggressive here. Everyone is out for BFF. His putting up some very nice defensive Stickies. And I always will resort to calling him his because I'm stupid. But Evil Moon's going to die here. He's episode with a huge bomb. Intel is picked up by Donut, though. Miraland is down to Trexanix. So much action going on. Vivid is now getting in there as well, trying to get the Intel. I'm trying to find Donut. He's out on middle, trying to 1v1 Cadis. But Cookie is there. And Cookie's going to make this about 17 versus 1 because of his mass. Massive scout strength will take down Donut. Heist is the only one alive. Tries to come out through the vent here. I think that we're going to see another similar situation that we saw at the end of round one. Is just TLR desperately trying to touch cap that intel back. Yeah, there's some interesting subplots going on here at middle. Like every middle, uh, TLR are committing a scout straight to the flag room. So they're basically five on middle. And BFF have spotted this and they're actually going to play with six initially and then send Bibbin in whenever the fight's won. And TLR are sort of forced to play defensively because they know they're outgunned in the middle, but they're all clumped up and they're just the bombing from Zebesai is destroying them on every middle. But uh, Donut did get the intel out fairly far, but it really wasn't worth it, I don't think. Uh, right now, though, BFF are pushing in, running with the Ubersaw onto Donut there. 
had the cover from Cookie as well, who has just grabbed the intel, but he gets juggled by Trixantic, hits a nice rocket there to stun him in the air. Cyber steals the kill on him, though. What a bastard. Despite having Uber right now, I think BFF are willing to wait for this intel to reset. They know they have plenty of time. Evil Moon has just spawned only on 10% Uber. That means they get about... 30 seconds of time to wait here, just time that they can waste before they even really need to get into the intel room. They'll obviously move much quicker than that, but they don't want TLR to be able to just sneak in through vents or through the shutter door and cap this. Right now it looks like Darn and Zebesai are going to be pushing in through the intel though, so I'm curious who's actually watching middle. Might be Cadis' job. Zebesai and Darn's popping their uber in, and all they're doing with it is just clearing space. Here comes the scout trying to get on the intel, but TLR putting up a very valiant defense. Vivin goes down, one soldier still in, Zebesai is taken out as well, and they move that about two feet, admirable. That's not very good. Yeah, I think Bibbin walked into a wall there. It wasn't even juggled. That one will be in the bloopers reel. But right now, TLR in position to push out here. Merlin only with 20%. Evil Moon with 100. Brief play here from the Finnish Medic. Actually opting not to pop it. And that's what they need to do. They need to muscle the way out to middle. And don't just give away those free Ubers as they did in the first round. Now they're in position to push in here. They can crush BFF. If Merlin doesn't get it back in time, he hasn't made it to the doorway. Ooh, just surfs around on that little rocket. And Kiedis gets picked off, though. This is going to be tough with no demo mana. And look at this. TLR have committed. Oh, I thought Heist was actually back at middle there. No, it's, he does have stickies on the door, though. That's going to slow them down. But he's not there to see them. He tried to blind it, but he got rushed by Bibbin. So now this is pretty tricky for TLR. Donut can just run for the flag room, but he opts to defend there. Helps out Drosu and picks off Bibbin. And he's going to make that capture right now. This is going to be one-to-one, -one, DJC, with six minutes, seven minutes left on the clock. We do have the uber advantage in favor of BFF right now. I think they're also going to have a bit of a positional advantage if they start moving because TLR spawns just are not quite there yet. Cookie and Cadis moving out of the intel room. This is pretty much where you have to go. It's a choke point still, but it's the widest of the choke points. You'll take less spam coming through, but they're just taking their time. Sticky Trap spotted out by Cyber, and he's clearing it away, but Cadis getting very good spam. Cyber down to 90 HP. Uber comes out very early for TLR, and this is going to be a solo Uber onto Cadis here. He's doing a lot of damage, keeping the demo back, keeping everyone out of this fight except for Cyber, but unfortunately... BFF just could not capitalize on it, and we're going to have to reset here in the BFF intel room. Yeah, I think that was a good read from TLR. I mean, really the onus is on them to be pushing there. They realized they hadn't done enough damage, but more so that Cyber it was like 10 HP, and it's going to take all the heals to bring him back up. They couldn't really bring in any other players there safely, especially with Kira still in the game, so they decided to back out and reset a little bit here. It looks like they're going to try the same thing again. They're just building up faster, and look already that no, the Uber no, no, managed no. to have. I, I keep telling that TLR that they build faster than any team, and if they just push on the button here, DGC, they're gonna crush them. Cookie is up on Sniper, hits a first headshot onto the demo, takes him down to 1 HP, and the Uber's popped. Heise wasn't even in the fight, they had to waste so much of that Uber just walking forward to get in position to shoot things. And the only pick they get is Darn, but it's not gonna matter because Cookie's gonna go crazy and take down Cyber. Two headshots so far for the young Finnish boy with the roundest head in the world. I expect more to come. <laughs> That's, that's true, man. As an uh, Afficondo of heads and unusual heads, he does have a very round head. You could bounce that thing off of the pavement, play basketball with it, it would be perfect. Oh, man. Uh, the Uber comes out here from BFF. All of them to Uber out from Banana. Scared of those stickies. They had to pop off. They picked up Drosu. So they're trying to push ahead to find Trex Antic here. But Donut's in on the flank, making something happen on the red banana. I think he's. Where is Donut actually? Is he going for the backup? I'm flicking through furiously here. Has he gone down? Oh, I'm an idiot. He's dead. Both guys down for TLR. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Admirable. We're not known for our accuracy. We're known for being bumbling idiots who are funny to watch trip over each other's feet. Right now, TLR do have their Uber. There are two down on BFF. The very big jump here out onto the middle by the soldier for TLR is going to open up a lot of space. They do have the pick onto Cookie here. But Bibbin is roaming around the vents right now. Can't quite tell if that is his own or the enemy's. He is just retreating to his base. Uber popped out from TLR, though. I get to catch that just in time. But they're so far back. This is a very defensive Uber out of TLR. It's not going to do much. And Evil Moon's going to walk right onto Cadis' Sticky Trap. And then Cadis hits a nice pipe on the Cyber as well. The Intel will be picked up by Donut. But he's going to have to find a clever retreat route. He's going through the enemy spawn. But that is not going to work. Cookie has just come up. He gets a nice few shots onto Donut and will kill him. Joso tries to sacrifice for the medic, but can only get Cadis, but that's a very good pick at this point, because that means BFF's ability to hold middle will be really, really just decimated, because Cadis can shut off two entrances at once. Yeah, I feel like TLR gave that one away to them, DJC. Basically, when they had Ubered so early, 
and got sort of juggled and slowed down. There's no shame in just walking back there because you're pretty much expecting BFF will have to Uber if you're holding middle anyway. But they decided to commit maybe because there was that scout going for the intel, but they'd done no damage and all the players they were trying to deal damage to were invulnerable. So it just didn't really work out well for them at all. Uh, I hope they can just play a little bit smarter. But right now it is going to be Uber versus Uber again. No crits Krieg in the equation yet, and that is something that is actually very powerful in Turbine, but neither team open to run it as BFF move towards that red flag room. The Ubers have been exchanged, and no one is going for the flag yet, actually. No one in BFF is making that move because they just haven't done enough damage. They can't get the kills, and they can't create the action. They're keeping a single heal onto Kairis here. He's getting all the love as BFF back out, trying to force a mistake here from TLR. Will they overextend? They're moving out as a solid red wave here, forcing BFF back with those two players down. No soldiers, no spam power to keep them back, DC. You see here a lot of the reason why winning mid or winning the initial mid fight doesn't really affect it too much because BFF were able to just retreat all the way back to the base. Everyone got out safely, though Cadis is in a bit of a trouble, a struggle right now, excuse me, as he's getting spammed aggressively by Heist. But Evil Moon is dancing on the rollers, bouncing out through the intel corridor here. And I think BFF want to move off of this, but look at how far behind on Uber they are now. They were even once, and now they're 25% behind. No idea how that actually happens if you bother to build at all. But Zebesai has now gotten two picks onto the flank, giving his team time to get their Uber. Yeah, Zebesai is the sheriff on the flank there. Got tricks Antic then Donut holding that one single-handedly. And, like, if I saw that as TLR, I would try to exploit that. I'm not sure if they have practiced any sort of uh, resub side pushes, but if you know Zebesai is playing there and he's playing forward, you can easily get that pick and then that just sort of starts to snowball as you're pushing 6 against 5 into the flag room, but they're just playing very defensively here. Are they happy with the draw? I think TLR are happy with the Spy play because we see Donut has come up on Spy. Scout, unfortunately, Joseph Isle almost gave him away because Zebesai was shooting rockets directly in Donut's direction. Donut is in behind Zebesai. I don't think he cares about Zebesai, but this looks very suspicious. Why would you disguise as soldier and then walk towards the medic? Does not work. Cookie spots him out very easily. The two shot will take him down. So Donut, we've seen him go huge on Spy sometimes, and the other times it was a... Uh, Interesting, I guess you could say. What's the what are TLR thinking here? Are they just not confident in their combo play? They think they can't beat BFF straight up. They start bringing out spies with only two minutes left. Like, if this ends in a tie, uh, like this round basically doesn't count. You have to win the round for it to count in the scoring. There's some strange rules there. I saw a big thread from Arcs about it. Maybe we'll get to discuss that in the next round if it comes into play. But this round can end 1 1 and basically doesn't count. Yeah, and I don't understand why TLR aren't pushing here because they have 30 seconds, they have enough time to get to the intel room. If they leave people behind, there's no way that BFF are going to break through. And I think considering the position BFF were in, they were safe. They preferred to hold this, but the counter Uber is going to come out of them as I just completely whiff on calling the fight here because I'm talking about random, unrelated bullshit. Let's be honest with what it is. BFF backing up into their intel room, but they have six there. They have the pyro. The defense is going to come. The reflect comes on the cyber. Cookie will finish him off. So we are going to see a 1-1 one -one here, folks. We're down to five seconds left. The picks come for TLR, but they're so late it doesn't matter. They just played it so passively, and you have to feel that's an opportunity wasted for TLR. It's a strange decision, like they pushed on 30 seconds, but Crack Clan Zone to Vic tells me uh, whenever we're practicing Turbine that it takes 32 seconds for a scout to go from flag room to flag room with the intel, so we really needed to have the intel at the point they pushed, but they weren't even close to it. And uh, just as I was saying about the scoring there, the situation now is BFF have won the first round, this round was a draw, so it doesn't count. So this round's TLR... not over, Ads. We do have overtime here. Oh, overtime! And we what didn't the get to mention it yet, but because <laughs> the 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 flag was touched, uh, it is there. It does exist in the world, so this is going to keep going on, which gives BFF with their full Uber an opportunity to push here. The time is ticking away, though. They know that it's getting low, so they pop onto the pyro. Bibbin is pushing it aggressively towards the flag, but is anyone even there to touch it? Cookie was nowhere near the fight, but here comes Zebesai on the flank. We'll take down Evil Moon. The ta the flag has been tapped. So we get another 60 second invigorating, enthusiastic overtime period ad. Well, thanks for keeping me uh, in check there, DDC. I just thought it was over. I was like, yeah, oh, oh, moving oh, on to sorry round three. To ads, but we have more Donut Spy, and he's walking through the vents right now, creeping in through the banana. Let's see what he does on this middle. 325 kills on that strange knife, man. It's seen some action. It's ended a few lives. 
He's, I think they've heard a spy, no? No? He's dancing around There's here. There's two scouts right Kedis there! Kedis 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 Ooh. Kedis. Kedis saw two scouts walk away from him and didn't yeah. really react to the third one. Just kind of thought, I guess, I mean, they do have Cookie on the team. He basically is two scouts by himself. So I guess I can understand a little bit. But that, will, that was a face stab as well. So uh, Kedis is down here. And the intel's about to reset, I do believe, for at least one of these sides. I don't know if BFF's... Yep, cool. That's the end of the round. So right now, as it is, we have one win for BFF, one draw that doesn't count, and we still need to find a winner. So I think if BFF win this next round, then it's over. And if TLR somehow win it, I don't know what the hell they're going to do because we are on kind of a time limit here. Teams generally don't want to play two and a half hours of TF2 each night. And if we get yeah. to the point where we need to play a fourth turbine round to decide this game, I don't know if that will happen tonight. That's basically what happens. Uh, if it, it, if TLR win, they haven't won, they've just managed to get it to a golden cap, then it's going to be one round to decide. And if it goes to a draw again, then apparently it's still a golden cap under the current rules. I'm not sure if they updated that, but something weird going on there. And we're on to another middle, and wow, look at the... Roll out from Cadis there, much faster, doing big damage onto TLR before they're even out the door. That is painful to watch. And BFF taking up a strong position on the crates here. They're going to send the scouts in aggressive, sing single and out Trixantic there on the flank. While Zebesai finds Donut, who was trying to go for that fast back cap. He has shut him down, and only three players remain alive right now for TLR. They don't have Uber yet, so it's going to be tough to defend that intel. It's already out, Bibin with the fast grab. He's getting chased by Drew, so he does drop it, but Cookie's there for the interception. The relay button has been passed, he's got that intel and he's going to make it out safely. And now Heiss and Evilman are just poking there on their own banana. That sounded wrong, but uh, they've decided to back off. Have you ever poked your own banana, DJC? We are a PG-rated show, Admirable. <laughs> Some topics are not fit for discussion. And despite having been a vanilla TV caster for like two years now, you still don't seem to have read the rule book. I'll forgive you because I love you, Ads, and you're the, you're the greatest side humor man, the greatest pervert that a friend could ever ask for. You see, <laughs> Just both... Added to the quote bot by Serious Cut there. You know you're doing a good job when you make the quote bot. Uh, both teams have Uber here holding the middle. We're, I would not be shocked if BFF just said, screw you guys, we're going to sit here and make you do things because we're up 1-0. And we do have a significant advantage. I mean, you can see right now they're just standing still looking at this dumb door in the banana that if you open it, someone's going to die. Unless the sticky debt misses, Ubers are going to come out here from nothing to everything in a second admirable. Lots of flashes going out here. I think TLR ended up with a better Uber. Tons of damage being done by the soldier, but he's in so deep he will get Marilyn with the last rocket loaded in his clip. Darn is dead as well. Cadis is still alive, and I'm looking for him right now, seeing if he can get a trap up. Anything that are from this middle, Bibbin is down as well, so it's three dead right now for BFF. Cadis is throwing all kinds of spam into the banana, but Trexanic jumps up behind him. A little bit of the backdoor action there, James. Oh, oh. like, man, what were BFF thinking there? I think they just stood there for so long, they were like, fuck it, let's go. But TLR control the man pack, they've got stickies on the door. It's never going to end well for them, but they went for it anyway, and it, they got punished exactly as they should have. TLR... Just keeping them honest right now, and it looks like we've had a pause, DJC, or else I've just crashed, and you can't even hear what I'm saying. This is indeed a pause, but I do think that BFF push just kind of is emblematic of their play. They do tend to get frustrated during the stalemates. They don't want to play a boring game where they sit there for 20 minutes, hell, not a single person who plays TF2 does that, except for the former Vanilla TV superstar Fish, the lovely Div1 medic, who just loved sitting in one place and waiting for the enemy team to push into him. Big shoutouts to him. He was the f the first game I ever casted for Vanilla TV Admirable. Was a 1-0 or like 2-1 Granary game featuring Fish. And I will yes. remember it forever. Haunts my dreams. It was the Inquisition Espanol. L'Inquisition de l'Espanol. Oh God. Oh, it's tattooed on my heart, DJC, but we're not allowed to talk about our bromance anymore or else old grandma will get a little bit pissy. So let's not make any... Quotation mark, gay jokes, DJC. Let's keep but it all no, about TF2. You know, the last two elections in America have shown that old people are losing their power, losing their grip on the world. So I say screw old grandma, let's make all of the bromance shows we want to. Let's share our love with the world <laughs> with our 310 viewers. If you have just joined us uh, on Twitch, this is Competitive Team Fortress 2. We are Vanilla TV, that's what we do. Uh, this is pretty much one of the 
final games, I think it is the final game of the Deep Premier last. Division. Before the playoffs, this is the last game of the season proper. And this is the second place team battling out with the third place team trying to just get up that playoff ladder. One extra slot to have one less game to play. But right now, it seems like BFF are well in control, DJC, as I just swallow my tongue or something. I kind of zoned out there. I was twirling something on my fingers and I lost thought of what you were saying and I lost you were, track. You were thinking about me. You were like, wow, isn't this lovely? <laughs> thinking about my dreamy eyes. I was thinking about you laying in a bed of roses and rolling over and all of the roses got crumpled and destroyed instantly. <laughs> Sticking to my rolls of flat. <laughs> stuck in between my spare tires. Uh, Dorn messages me on Steam here and says, Can you imagine the excitement this turbine gives to me? I have a rock hard erection, can't focus. Like it is so action filled, fun, super duper map. And I should really read these things before I read them out live, DJC, but there you go. Information from Darn, the BFF captain. You know, it is a little bit risque, it's not the most child friendly thing, but it is an insight into what the players are thinking. And oftentimes, the players who play this game competitively are not the most. I don't know, what's the opposite of foul mouthed, admirable? I can't uh, think of a term that would apply to that. I don't know, nobody in this well game spoken. is a goodie. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I guess. Especially when you're darn and you're just finished and wasted all the time. So <laughs> I don't know. comes in and says, uh, kids have erections too, don't worry about it. So there you go. <laughs> they get more erections than any of us, to be honest. So I guess they can relate better. But, uh, this is kind of the worst thing that could happen in an already slow map. If you're playing on Turbine and the map is going at the pace it has been for the last 10 minutes, like a 1-1 one, one round in the middle of Turbine, and then you just get a pause. It feels awful, Admirable. It feels like you had Guinness and Jägermeister together, and you wake up Aww. the next morning and you know the pain that's gonna come. And you're shitting just some sort of black tar, but anyway... Skyride says we should raise the, the standard here. We're just letting it slip, DJC. You know, we've fallen into our old ways. So uh, let's keep it professional and let's talk about the TF2. Like you say, this can mm, really kill the momentum of a team. TLR are probably quite happy with this pause. They're able to talk about the game, what they're doing wrong, and how they can get back into it. But I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. I think just the combined experience of the BFF players, they played a lot of Turbine in the past. They seem to be just in the driving seat all the way here, DJC. I do have some inside information since we're trying to get back to the TF2. Cadis has informed me that Drosophile has had some sort of issue. Uh, maybe his computer or internet is down. Looks like Beavern, uh, the Swedish superstar, and actually frequent mercenary for BFF, will be substituting in for Droso. And I feel like that's an upgrade in several ways. Uh, Drosophile has the DM, but oftentimes his brain just kind of goes awry, uh, which hurts consistency a lot, and I feel like Beavern is maybe the same DM, better brain, more consistent, uh, not obviously a member of TLR, so it might be hard for him to adapt to playing with the team. You know what, DJC, I would agree with you. And on paper, Beavern is a better scout than Droso, but in the context of his team, like I know I understand that Droso is actually on a whisper key with um, Donut because his Donut's English isn't the best so they prefer to speak in French with sort of separate scout comms and Drosa would maybe try and bring Donut into the game a lot. I'm not sure if that's improved over the course of the season but I think it, it could be sort of have a, a knock-on effect to their scout combo beyond just the the chemistry they have, it's communication and everything. That looks we... like we had a little unpause. Uh-oh. Yeah, Beaver is coming in right now, I do believe. So if that was in real time was the unpause, that would be for Beaver to connect. So shortly, we'll get to unpause, we'll get to see all of the action, we'll get to see everything that happens right here in Admirable. You know we actually haven't discussed the situation right now. Cookie's healed right now, sitting in his intel room, it's three versus five. I guess four if Joseph is not in the fight, but no, 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 Joseph I will be in this fight. Couldn't tell where he was on the map or if he was dead. There's four people pushing the intel room for TLR, they have their medic, they have overheals, and it's just Cookie alive there. Right now, the three spawns are coming for BFF, but if TLR play this right, they can get in quickly, get the cap, and get out. Yeah, my game is just lagging about a little bit here. Is it still paused, or am I imagining things, DJZ? It's unpaused and repaused something like four times at the moment. 
I don't know what the hell is going on, that's usually not how you do it. Must be some further issues going on with Beaver and actually getting into the game. Like Maybe it's one of those uh, weird situations where someone says unpause and 12 players all press their pause no. button at the same time. <laughs> Magic has happened because Josephile is back in the server, apparently. We are unpaused, back to real live action, and we have no further topics to discuss and make Skyred get angry at us. Scout is in, the Uber is pop. they should be able to get to the in top of their stickies all over it, they're getting cleared off, but Trek's landing as Uber cannot quite get it, tries to rocket jump away, but flails at it a little bit and then drops it so that Josephal can take it, he's going to move out through the banana, and my HUD is broken, I believe our streamers is as well, that's just a side effect of TF2 lately, when it comes out of an unpause, the HUD gets a little messy, that will fix itself in time, there is nothing we can do about it if it is happening, so I apologize for that. My HUD's just fine, DGC, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we're all middle here with TLR in control, but Meyerlin with that big uber charge and they're starting to push out here the BFF combo are moving up towards the med pack, but they're just going to sit back. Wow, are they waiting for Kedis to spawn? That could be quite likely, here he is. And now the aggression will begin, but Evil Moon is slowly but surely building up that uber charge. I think my HUD is broken because now they do have uber GG, so you were right. According to my HUD, right now Evil Moon has 45% Uber and has had so for about 30 seconds. So with that, with that poor of a building by TLR, I don't know why BFF aren't pushing. You have 55% Uber advantage and they're not even building. you got to go on an admirable. But uh, my <laughs> HUD actually is repaired now. Both teams are we're just waiting. I guess they're being kind and waiting for the six man to arrive. But if I were BFF right now, I would have been pushing in and taking every little inch of ground I possibly could. Dress file has returned. TLR do have control of middle. Interesting to see if they push. We saw this happen last round. Do you remember what happened last round, Admiral? Because I think I fell asleep during it. Yeah, TLR just opted to wait right at the end of the round uh, and push with 30 seconds to go. And right now there's 5 minutes 30 left on the clock, so we could be sitting here for about 5 minutes, TJC. I hope you've got some uh, interesting anecdotes about your holidays this year or something to fill the time, maybe a little slideshow for us. Well, I do have a new dog, and he gives me all kinds of awful stories I can tell people. Mm. He was, he was bursting. That well in our previous cast. <laughs> yeah, one guy left because I told dog stories, but whatever, I don't care. My dog, I woke up today, and he was running down the hall, free as a bird, with something in his mouth. I was like, what the hell is that? I got closer, he had a big turd in his mouth. Just blasting it down the hallway. Dog. <laughs> Man's best friend in action there, and now TLR finally realized that BFF aren't going to push, they're going to have to make something happen here if they want to win this. BFF know that if they just sit here, they're in a strong position, but wow, they're just peaking, they're trying to bait them in. I wonder, I'd love to get an admin confirmation on what exactly is going to happen if this round ends in a draw as well. I know there was a, a little bit of debate on the forums, I didn't read the full thread, I'm sorry, please forgive me, maybe Kumfo can tell us what will happen if this map ends in a draw. Will a single golden cap round be played to decide? And is that fair, DGC? That would mean it was actually 1-1. I think if, if we uh, get to the point where we have two stalemated rounds out of the three, and there was one round one, you should just give the round, the map, rather, to the people who won the round. So I would hope they would just go put some logic in there and be like, hey, BFF won, and you guys just kind of screwed yourselves by wasting all your time. Scout is in, though, or Soldier, rather, is in. Trexana with the force off. Merlin down to 69 HP. HUD's still so broken that I can't tell what's going on beyond that. Soldier is in under the middle and will force Evil Moon in a bad position as to multi three times already. And they're not going to be able to do much with his Uber, so that's a very nice trade by Darn. Yeah, this is great. They've got a pile here from Bibbin as well. BFF playing in full turtle mode. Going to deny any push in here from TLR. Zebesai picks up Cyber. That is pocket on the pocket action there. But Heist finds Zebesai. And no soldiers up for Marilyn right now. He's going to have trouble building Uber. But he already has it. Or is my HUD still broken? I can't. Uh, uh! Gonna find him. percent for Miralyn, 37 for Evil Moon. I'll just I'll stare at Evil Moon, but Cadis is gonna go down here. As, Joseph, as I'm staring at Evil Moon, I see Joseph Aldis walk in and two shot him. Soldier is on fire because Bibbin is playing the very defensive pyro here. In fact, he's getting aggressive as well, peeking around the corner. The demo man's lit a flame and donut will go down. TLR in a bit of a bad position here. Evil Moon eating some spam is forced back. I do believe Miralyn has Uber. Let me confirm that. In fact, both of them have Uber, and Cadis has just spawned. And Cadis is actually trying to move through the vents here. Looks like he wants to peek on the upper, kind of come along with a BFF push. So I'm going to put my eyes on the combo here, see what exactly Miralyn is going to be doing. Cadis is peeking, baits out the double soldier bomb here. 
But BFF not going to do anything off of it. Looks like it's just more distraction, more time wasting, more stale mating. And boy, I just love all of those things so much. I think BFF have just got a little bit mad here. Reading between the lines of Darn's comments, he wasn't impressed with the way TLR were playing, that they were opting to go for the stalemate, so BFF might just be giving them a taste of their own medicine, DGC. They could just sit here as long as they want, and we'd like to think that the rule set would uh, let BFF win, considering they are one round up at the minute. Uh... I just saw an air shot! Someone got an air <laughs> shot. Something exciting happened! Woo! That was Trexantic. <laughs> Hits Epicize, he went in for the soldier, or the bomb out of the medic, rather. It was a very nice air shot, actually, but we are going to see Bibbin come up sniper for the intel room defense here since the force did not come. Big pipe lands on three of TLR's players. Donut's going to die very early. Look at the multis. Four multis here, I believe, so far. And the Uber comes off from Mirlin. No multis whatsoever until very, very late. Cadis has done a ton of damage. Cyber got caught in deep and is dead. Three down now is Cookie and Bibbin coming on the flank and clean it up. Joseph Allen Trexanic dead. Heist is trapped out as well onto the health pack. Gets a little bit of extra survivability. But he will not survive this, and it's just Evil Moon up right now, and he cannot defend the intel by himself. He will have Donut. Donut will probably try and give his life here to delay this, but he eats a direct rocket as he comes out. The scout is there. He's engaging. He has no idea who to shoot at. Zubicide twirls around and shoots him in the face. Here comes the reinforcements, but they're too late. Bibbin has the intel. He's got to be back out on middle right now. He's moving through the banana. He has arrived at the crate, and this will be a second cap with 120 to go in the game. Admirable TLR are going to have to balls deep this if they want another cap. Yeah, uh, look at BFF backing off here, just playing it super defensive. They know they've got that cap in the bag. All they need to do is survive and wait for those two spawns to come in. There's Zebusai up now, darn, in another 10 seconds. And TLR recognize this is their time to go. Merlin has the Uber, though. He's going to be able to keep his players alive and just clean up here. That is wiping the floor there with those remaining TLR players. Evil Moon on 100% Uber charge, but only 79 health. He feels like he's got to go forward. He's not sure what to do. His, his players aren't really sure either. They're going to allow the bomb in here from Zebesai. Jumps in to go for the medic, but actually turns around to focus. The soldier gets that pick, and now Evilman has been forced to pop off, but they're surrounded by five BFF players. They need to go back. But at the same time, they need to push, because it's 2-1 to one now, and it's 30 seconds left, DJC. I think this is all but over. Donut Man's in the intel. Donut, not Donut Man. Donut Man was my American medic for a while. Donut is in. He's dancing around. He hasn't taken any damage. They need to just get a touch onto this flag here. They need it to reset, but Joseph Al falls to his death in the process. Heist tries to jump in as well and goes down. Evil Moon is trying to distract. Uber is popped. Stickies everywhere. And that was a pretty valiant defense there by BFF and a very nice try by TLR to even just touch it to create an overtime. But thankfully, we do not have to watch a fourth round of Stalemate Turbine. BFF are the clear winners, having taken the first round 5-2, to two, and the third round 2-1 to one with a nice 1-1 one, one draw in the middle. DJC, check out the uh, SDB chat there. I know if you're on the stream, you can't see the chat, but a bit of back and forth here from Kiris calling a GG in uh, inverted commas. Then following up with a homos, I think BFF were very unimpressed with the way TLR chose to play that, that very defensive style. So I wonder, will they just be trying to absolutely crush them on the next map, Gullywash? But before we go there, DJC, who was your man of the map for Turbine Pro? I'm going to go with Cookie. He was winning pretty much every 1v1. He won a few 1v2s. He's always kind of the strongest player on BFF. Uh... Either him or Cadis rotates depending on the map, and Turbine's very scout friendly, so I'm gonna give it to the, the Finnish man, the roundest head in the world. Yeah, I'm sort of torn between um, Cadis or Zebusai. Like, Cadis was just constantly putting out damage and getting lots of sick pipe frags, but Zebusai was having a lot of success, both in his defense on the flank and his bombings. Seemed to be working well, especially on middles. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Cadis, man. He just played well right from the start. So uh, in terms of an outro for the VOD, I guess I could say this has been Vanilla TV covering ATF 12 Season 13 powered by TT Sports Premier Division Week 7 fixture between BFF and The Last Resort. This has been Map 1 Turbine Pro with Admirable DJC and Skyrim on the stream. Stay tuned for Gollywash coming up now.